guys, welcome back. So if my hair looks a little thinner in this video, it's because I just finished taping the thinnest binding ever. And I think I tore about half of it out. Seriously, this thing took years off my life. Anyway, I'm not going to show you the footage from uh, me taping that because pretty much any of it could be used to have me committed to an asylum. So, we finally got to the fun part. Not that I haven't been having a great time all along. Now we actually get to paint it. Based on the reference picture that the customer sent me, we're going to go with Autoware's Autoborn Crimson, number 4715. And the picture that he sent me was just a hair, like maybe a shade darker than this uh, at most. So it's almost a, a dead match, honestly. And I feel that if I tried to actually tint this, I would end up with something slightly darker than what he's actually going for. So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is base coat this in Auto Air Sealer Dark because base coating in dark will make it slightly darker whereas base coating in white uh, will make it slightly lighter. Generally speaking, I would actually use this to tint the white and I would seal it in, in a red essentially, but uh, instead I'm going to go with the black underneath to make this ever so slightly darker. So if you're wondering at all about the lead up to this, uh, how we got to this stage, Please check out the previous videos on this topic. It's the, uh, the Red Jazz Guitar Series that I've been doing. And if you're concerned at all about the prep, uh, getting ready to paint a guitar, I have several videos on that as well in my Paint Talk series and my previous How to Paint Your Guitar series. So what I'm going to do here is put on about three or four coats of AutoWare's Dark or Black Sealer. Uh, if you're curious why I'm using AutoWare, I have a Paint Talk video about that as well. But I discussed it with the customer and this is what he's after so I'm going to put a, three or four coats of this on or until I achieve full coverage and then I'm going to move on to the crimson shortly thereafter. Anyway, that's about enough chatter out of me so uh, I'm going to start painting this thing and you can listen to my poorly recorded music that I made on my iPhone. I apologize for that. Four coats of sealer and the four coats of crimson that wraps up our color for this guitar. I've now peeled all the tape off the binding. Everything looks good. There's a little bit of cleanup work. A little bit of paint managed to get under the tape in a few places. So if something like that happens and you're working with a binding, uh, you should be able to just take a razor blade and carefully scrape it off. And in order to get rid of any ridges left from the tape, you just go over with a scotch pad uh, or a scotch brite or whatever whatever you want to call it, and just gently rub out those edges. So this guitar is ready for clear coat now. Getting close to being done. So like I generally do, I'm going to go ahead and mix up my catalyzed polyurethane now and spray it off screen, uh, or off camera rather, because it makes a heck of a mess. If you're curious about how to mix that clear coat and how to spray it, I think it's part six of my How to Paint Your Guitar series that I did, like the first one that I did. Uh, we'll cover that. It shows how I mix it, it shows which clear coat I use specifically, not that it really makes a difference, and it shows how I spray it. So like I said, I'm going to take care of that off camera and then we'll come back and do the final polish and make sure everything is good to go and uh, I'll get that plate, that custom plate that the customer ordered all finished up and uh, we'll go from there. So that about wraps it up for this video. Please subscribe so you can uh, see how this turns out and check out my other videos that come out every week. So, just trying to keep everybody entertained.
As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video or found it helpful or had some reason to watch it. And I'll see you next time.